Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio. I'm going to be talking about diminished chords and explaining some examples of how they move, how they resolve, and how they work, and what they are, and this sort of thing. Um, now, you know, a diminished chord is a tension chord, and music is all about tension resolution. So the diminished chord has two tritones in it. Let's take D diminished as an example. My, all minor thirds, it's built on minor thirds, and it has a tritone here, which is a flat five, and a tritone here, which is a flat five, and these want to move, they want to resolve inward, this wants to go there, and this one wants to go there. So, if you take a diminished chord, like D diminished, and you put a G on the bottom, you're going to get a dominant seventh chord. A G7 flat 9. So within a, a dominant 7 flat 9 you have a diminished chord in there. So they function differently but they they relate to each other. Let me put it that way. So diminished chords tend to move or resolve and move from a diminished chord ascending a half step or a whole step often to a minor chord or descending in half steps and whole steps, whereas dominant seventh chords tend to move cyclically. So a G7 would would resolve to C, because this tritone would resolve to there. So you'd have this resolving to C. So it resolves to its one, which would be up a fourth or down a fifth, cyclically, through a cycle of fifths. Now, I'm going to be using the Barry Harris uh, diminished sixth scale system to start with on this lesson and what it is is it's based on the C scale to start any major scale but with an added flat six so if it's F we're adding that flat six in the scale so we have eight notes that enables us to have four group two groups of four chords so we have C6 moving to D diminished on the next step because that notes in there. Then we have C6 inverted to the first inversion. Then we have D diminished inverted one time. And then we have C6 inverted to the second inversion. Then we have the D diminished inverted. Then we have the C6 inverted to the third inversion. Then we have the D diminished inverted. You see, so that's what's going on there. So that D diminishes moving there or moving here in that manner. It's moving a whole step here and a whole step downward. I'm talking about the root movement. So now what's going on is this is D diminished moving to C6 inverted. However, it's also G7 flat 9 moving to C6. So 5-1. If I go to G7 there, then it's working cyclically. Cyclically. That's a good word. Cyclically. <laughs> now, you know that this chord, if we put an A on the bottom, is an A minor 7. And this would be now E7 flat 9. You see, so now that G7 has a family too. So the D flat diminished has the family of. D, the family of D-flat, F-diminished, A-flat diminished, and B-diminished, or C-flat diminished. Now, there's going to be four members in that family, and there's going to be three families. So the next family would be here, and the next one, the other one would be there. So they're chromatic. But they're also one, four, five. So this, I like to call this the F family because the F is in there. I like to call this the C family because the C is in there. And I like to call this the G family because the G is in there. So C, F, G. One, four, five in C. That's your three families. And then they have four members within each family. That three times four is 12. There's your 12 dominant chords. Same thing, I mean 12 diminished chords. Same thing with the dominant sevenths works like this. 
That can be a G7 flat 9. That's the fifth, the flat seven, the flat nine, the third. This can be a B or a B flat seven, flat nine. That's the third, the fifth, the flat seven, the flat nine. Or a D flat seven, flat nine, in which that's the flat nine. This is the third, the fifth, the flat seven. Or an E seven, flat nine, in which that's the seventh, the flat nine, the third, and the fifth. You want to download the score so you can see this on a score. If you're having, if you're not understanding what I'm what I'm saying here, but that's amazing when you think about it. That can have all those functions. So with those four different dominant chords, now you're going to resolve the four different major keys, right? The G7 will resolve to C. The the B flat seven will resolve to E flat. The C sharp or D flat seven will resolve to G flat or F sharp, and the E seven will resolve to A or F sharp minor. So it resolves to its relative major or relative minor in each case. So that means these moves can be how we're moving here, up or down, can relate to those various keys, either either relative major or relative minor. In the Barry Harris system, moving to from G7 to C is this. Moving from B flat 7, it's going to move to E flat 6 there. Moving from C sharp or D flat 7, it's going to move to G flat major, which is there. Re resolving from uh, E7 flat 9 is going to resolve to A, which is here. Right? So here's your resolutions. And here's your. Or how about this? The amazing thing is the way they sound. You see, they all work. And they're all logical. So download the score and watch this. But I'm going to give you another example. And this is actually applying these because. What good is it unless it works in a tune? So I picked the tune, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. And I'm going to play it in which it's going to use that chord in it. Now I could put it in C sharp, but I'm going to put it in B. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put it in B major. So B major to C diminished. That diminished C diminished is going to move up a half step to C minor, 7. Then here's your D chord, D diminished chord. Moving up a half step to E flat minor, so that'd be like you know that'd be the G flat system because that's relative minor to G flat. But we're not worried about G flat. We're in the key of B here, which is five sharps. Now here, that was ascending. Now descending. Here's the diminished chord. Descends to a C sharp minor. So there is the diminished chord descending to the, a half step to a, the minor chord, which would be like, yeah, C, C sharp minor would be relative to E major. We're not worried about that. We're just looking at it, how it applies to this tune. Back to C sharp minor. All right, now let's put it in C so it's easier to see. C major, D flat diminished, moves to D minor, 7, moves up a half step to D sharp diminished. There's our yeah, diminished chord moving up a half step to a minor 7. Now descending, E flat diminished to a, diminished, a, a D minor. Another diminished half step below, D flat diminished, moving up to D minor. So now we can put the dominant sevenths in there in place of those diminished chords because we saw how that works, right? So if we did this, that'd be A7, flat 9, moving to D minor, 5, 1. There's the, the D 
sharp, which is the same as B7, moving to E minor. You see, that works that way, ascending. Descending is different. Um, another example would be A misbehaving. C. C sharp diminished, moving up to D minor. Moving up to E flat diminished, moving up to E minor. dominant chord. You saw that ascending motion, diminished, minor seven, diminished, all in half steps, right? So there's a couple examples of how this works. And you can relate this back to the system that I just talked about of the various keys and how those diminished chords were moving. That one diminished chord can move here, it can move here, it can move here, it can move here, and it can also descend in a variety of ways as well, like that, or, 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 okay? So, download the score, study this. This is going to be one of those things you're going to have to study and have an aha moment, like I did when I was sleeping, couldn't sleep, woke up, started thinking about the diminished chords and what they do, and picturing them in my head, you know, and saying, well now, now I know something more about this, what, what good is it? Uh, well, well, let's see how it works in tunes. And it does work. It works perfectly. It's an amazing concept of music theory, I think. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Write to me, leave me a comment, I will respond if you give me enough time. And until next time, I'll say swing loose and we'll have a sign off. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Morning. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I want to give you a little shout out on my book. This is my book called Jazz Piano Methods and Songbook for Professional Playing. I've sold thousands of copies. I have a special sale going on right now. If you buy my book, you'll get my 140-page appendix of exercises for free. All you have to do is order my book through my website and then write to me. And my email address is below and I will send that to you directly. To your email. So please check out the videos I've made on both books so you can see everything that's inside them. Where can you go and see a complete inside of a book on a video? Only here at the Jazz Ranch. So well, thanks for tuning in today. Please give me a comment. I love to hear from you. I always answer all comments. You'll see that, that I do answer all comments if you give me enough time. And until next time, in the words of my great friend upstairs, Hermie Dressel, I'll say, swing loose. We'll see you next time around. Be cool. Bye-bye.